Hello, my name is Emil and I'm from the Multisensory Experience Lab at Albert University, Copenhagen, here to present our paper. Uh, and this study is part of my PhD funded by the Danish municipality of uh, Frederiksberg. And in this study, we aim to investigate how uh, VR might be embedded into existing rehabilitation programs at an outpatient setting, specifically for chronic obstructory pulmonary disease, for short, which is an irreversible disease that causes a chronic inflammatory condition in the lungs, which obstructs the airflow. And uh, symptoms often include uh, difficulty breathing or coughing, and it's uh, caused by a long-term exposure to irritant gas inhalations, for example, cigarettes or paint or pollution. Uh, it is estimated that approximately 175 million people are affected by COPD globally, and with over 3 million annual deaths, uh, unfortunately, due to the increase in life expectancy, we will expect to see more of these cases surging in the next 20 to 30 years. Although the damage done to the lungs is irreversible, um, there are current treatment plans in place to increase the quality of life of people living with COPD. And pulmonary rehabilitation is a validated uh, treatment strategy to increase um, life expectancy and quality of life. For example, through smoking cessation, physical activity and teaching uh, breathing techniques. And uh, one of the physical activities is uh, high intensity interval training where you change between periods of uh, high intensity uh, interval and low intensity intervals, uh, which require the patients to, to perform at the maximum of their capacity. Unfortunately, exercise programs oftentimes suffer from low adherence or motivation, and many patients report that it's intimidating to pressure oneself to the point of exhaustion, uh, which is why many interventions try to seek external help, if you will, from uh, gamifying the intervention with extra games or serious games to create a novel situation that can help release some of the tension. And virtual reality has also been used in this regard. But within the field of virtual reality-based rehabilitation, VR is often used as an umbrella term to describe many different display types, including standard computers, consoles, and immersive displays. Uh, indeed, a recent review found uh, only 3 out of 21 studies describing a VR intervention actually used head-mounted displays. Now, this doesn't necessarily pose a problem, but given that more cyber sickness symptoms are oftentimes reported when using immersive displays over non-immersive displays, uh, we fear that this uh, inconsistency might lead to uh, effectiveness of uh, VR in pulmonary rehabil rehabilitation being attributed to uh, immersive displays, even though immersive displays have not been used. Uh, therefore, there's still uh, a need to a requirement to investigate this in further detail. In this study, we wanted to investigate how COPD patients might react to having their program augmented with VR equipment. Um, to measure that, we did a longitudinal observational study uh, inspired by crossover uh, study design. And the pur purpose was acceptability and feasibility. And by that, we mean uh, how the intervention was received by the target population. Does it, does it meet the needs and requirements? And is it a safe alternative to standard care? And the main thing to figure out was, can motivation be improved and retained for seven to eight weeks during the program? Uh, does VR induce or hamper physical performance? Does it cause uh, more shortness of breath or adverse events? And uh, would they experience any cyber sickness related to, to use of VR? For the study, we were able to recruit three male participants between 68 and 86 years. Uh, this, the program ran for, uh, for eight weeks, uh, twice weekly. Uh, 12 sessions total um, and the participants took turn between the two VR setups so that they biked uh, once every week uh, while being monitored by two, one to two physiotherapists uh, who measured and monitored any signs of discomfort or other adverse events. So what did we find? Motivation was retained during the study but it was very hard to begin with. Here we see the, uh, the interest in German scale on the, on the top and the uh, pressure tension in the bottom. We measured motivation using both VR and standard therapy, but we saw no noticeable difference between the two in any of the IMS I subscales. Also, there were no noticeable difference between physio physiological demands, both in terms of heart rate and self-perceived exertion levels. Uh, reported dissonant levels were between none and moderate, but none of the participants reported any lasting effects. 
Uh, and most frequently they remark that they simply look down onto the road if they started to feel dizzy in any way. Um, concluding our study, we did a small group interview that uh, confirmed our quantitative findings. Uh, the VR environment became repetitive uh, for the participants and they would have pre preferred some interaction or even social interaction. And if so, it should be collaborative rather than competitive. Um, to conclude, VR could be used as an acceptable solution for COPD patients doing high intensity interval training. But, so all studies have limitations and now I do as well. Uh, first of all, this was not a comparative study, so we have to be careful inferring causality or generalizing the results. Uh, the retention of motivation might easily contribute to other factors. Uh, we didn't use any validated tool for measuring cyber sickness, and the, we didn't have any uh, proper rep representativeness for since that uh, if women generally live longer than men uh, and are more likely to be diagnosed with COPD, and we didn't have any uh, female volunteers in the study, which is also a limitation. Um, and there was low internal consistency in the IOI questionnaire. That being said, we believe that this could be a potential solution for patients with very low motivation, and even it could be used as a tele-rehabilitation tool, a uh, home-based therapy uh, connecting citizens in online group therapy, and the, um, the current uh, COVID situation really demonstrates the severe problem of ha population having to be uh, going into self-isolation and not really receiving the proper treatment that they require. Um, so that being said, um, that concludes my presentation. Um, thank you so much for your time.